Hi, this is Chris with Wiley Development and Tasty Equity. Welcome to the highlight reels from our monthly webinar series. This segment is about how to fuel the growth of your fast casual restaurants, leveraging a variety of forms of financing. We're going to show you how to achieve our mantra, which is building more stores with less cash. This is Chris Wiley with Wiley Development Group. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I am a store development company along with my brother Pete, who's on the camera. Um, we decided to set out and try to become the largest franchisee of Rapid Fire Pizza and Hothead Burritos as a part of our race to 200 stores. Because at 200 units, the game begins to change. Very few restaurant franchisors that try ever get to 200. When you get to 200, you begin to attract the attention of people like Darden and Rourke and KKR and the big investment groups. We want to own a piece of as many restaurants as possible when we get there. And we believe we got a fighting chance of being there within three years. So I'll say when Ray started Hothead Burritos, he had been a Subway guy for about 20 years. Um, Ray, uh, I know you're on the line if, uh, if you're able to unmute. Um, I like to talk about how when you first got started in Subway, um, the, air, or the development agent actually built most of the stores and then walked you in the bank to get financed. Yeah, actually, um, a lot of Subway development agents, what, the way they developed their areas was they would build the stores and they would just simply – uh, resell them or flip them to a franchisee or a, a new franchisee in the area that wanted to, you know, become a franchisee. And it's it just kind of a little machine. They'd build stores to sell them and build them and sell them. And sometimes those area developers would carry the loan themselves or they would, you know, help you get to a bank and, and do a bank loan. And, and Ray, when, when you uh, decided to go out on your own and create Hothead Burritos uh, more than a decade ago, um, one of the first watershed moments for you was, A, getting them open and getting, and it worked. That was awesome. But two was getting, uh, or say, what do you call it? You get endorsed or certified by SBA? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of, I guess it's a certification. You you become listed on the SBA registry. And that, that takes a little bit of time to do as, as a new brand, but we did get it done. It took a couple of years, but uh, we are now registered. Both of our brands are. And uh, that just makes it easier for a franchisee to come in and get a loan. Yeah, and we've done many, many uh, small business administration loans to help people cross over from their day jobs into becoming a franchisee. Um, one of the things I learned from one of our uh, friends at Huntington Bank, and we have many banks we work with, uh, they all kind of compete for the business, which is great. But he, he once said, uh, SBA loans, which we'll talk about here now, are great for getting started. For that first one or two, maybe three stores, the SBA loan gives you maximum flexibility. It gives you the highest amount of uh, loan amount, thereby reducing the amount of cash you need to get your store open. But it's got some gotchas. And the gotchas are they tie up your house. Uh, they tie up any other assets you have. Uh, so you become beholding to the SBA uh insurance and ultimately the banks that are involved. So as you grow, uh, you want to move as a, a, the number of the people on the presentation have indicated, you want to move towards cash flow based loans. So when Ray developed Rapid Fire Pizza three, almost four years ago now, we were well into the game. I think you had maybe 60 or more uh, hotheads open. Um, you crossed over into the Rapid Fire Pizza game. But at that point, Ray, I remember you talking to me about how the banks were so aggressive with you in a positive way that you had a lot of cash flow, you, you had a bunch of corporate stores, but there's real advantages in using the traditional bank financing where they're lending on your cash flow and they fund the projects and you keep your cash in reserve. Um, could you just talk a little bit about your experience moving over to traditional cash flow based bank loans and getting out from under the thumb of the SBA loans? Yeah, I mean, there comes a certain point in business if you're you know successful and you have cash flow and you have a couple of years of experience of good cash flow then the conventional lending is great because you know we deal with a lot of smaller banks and they will loan based really on credibility and uh, obviously your your you know your credit worthiness and your you know your credit score but more importantly they're just looking at simply the fact you've been in business you've had good cash flow for a few years and you know they're running the odds and statistically it's a good risk so they do it yeah, and typically those loans are less expensive than SBA loans. Uh, those loans may have a lower loan to value. In my example, about 80%, even as low as 70% for a bank or credit union loan. But the difference is when you do an SBA loan, let's say you need a, a $100,000 down payment, the bank is going to make you put that $100,000 in the bank account for that business, and then they're going to disperse it, and then they're going to begin funding behind you. Whereas the banks... Uh, sorry, uh, in a non-SBA loan scenario, the bank will 
fund the project like a construction lender and you keep your capital in reserve, you have much more flexibility and you tend to have lower cost of funds, much more flexible and it's the way you want to go as you grow your business. There's very aggressive lenders. You hear of companies like the Credit Suisse of the world or Blackstone or, or Fortress Financial. Those kind of companies will come. If you have five, seven, ten or more restaurants and they will compete to consolidate all that lending in lines of credit creating even more flexibility. So I've been surprised in our conversations with large operators coming over from uh, Subway, for example, or from Burger King or from uh, other concepts that as they cross over to start developing our brand, they literally have been quite unsophisticated about the way they develop their restaurants. They have individual loans on every store. There's lots to deal with. Uh, Pete's on the line with us today. Here, throw Pete a softball, but <laughs> Pete deals with all the bill paying. One of the things we do at Wiley Development Group is we run the back office uh, finance and capital markets and HR and payroll for our sponsored owner operators. But Pete, even today, we deal with that where we have you know one loan per restaurant entity, right? Correct. Yeah, you got to manage, you know, three or four bank accounts, three or four loan payments, and uh, yeah, it's, it definitely gets easier if you can consolidate them. Especially yep. from and, a and I, point. yeah, absolutely. And we have institutional partners with us today uh, as a part of as we raise additional capital that will get much more flexible with us, and they're they're knocking at the door to help us expand. So again, uh, we'll talk in a little bit about how you can participate with us. So as an individual operator, you may not have the opportunity to tap into those resources. And again, these can be even lower cost of funds than the bank or the SBA loans also operated by banks. But uh, if you partner with someone like us, you may have access to these kind of resources. We need a lot of folks. Uh, Darren Nicholson, I believe, is in the audience today. Darren is with iPorit. Uh, we partnered with iPorit for our cell for alcohol systems. Uh, again, on our uh, Wiley Development YouTube channel, you can see the past events where Darren was a panelist with us. Um, we have been piloting that technology. Uh, we did it started last October. Um, but as we got to know each other, we realized that Darren had a lot of folks who had a dream, were trying to build a large uh, bar and restaurant, uh, trying to go with 40, 50, 60 caps of sell for alcohol. And as they went down the path to negotiate leases, they quit and try to get their financing for their projects, which could be a half million to million dollar projects, um, they quickly found out that without a national franchise brand, without a history of operating, the banks would say, sure, we'll do the money or we'll do the loan at 50% down, right? I mean, Pete, I don't think we've deployed more than 100,000 in capital into a single restaurant in the four that we have, right? Yeah, and I think it's even been lower than that. But in the... Yeah. The challenge with so we met a lot of these folks who are well down the road. Uh, we just uh, talked to one uh, a couple weeks ago who literally wrote a check because he had it in his savings of almost fifty thousand dollars to prepay his lease for one year. If you work with us, one of the opportunities to uh, consider working with a brand like us in our tap room concept or our hot head burritos can or cantina concept is that we're pairing up self for alcohol in a large format where the kitchen is our branded. Uh, fast casual concept and the adult bar area is a, is adjacent to it so that we can leverage the brand, leverage the franchise, leverage all the support, but more importantly, leverage the credibility of a franchise brand that's got national recognition, is even uh, ranked and rated in some of the national trade journals. And again, we've got SBA uh, certification so we can get SBA loans when we need them. Hard money works. Anybody who's been in business a long time will t uh, once in a while use it. Um, it can be very high interest, it can be very short term, but often if you're trying to get started in this business, you're trying to follow that dream, one of the challenges is that hard money party, especially private party, is going to want a bunch of equity as well as the loan. So you end up working for them, and that's not the goal of setting up in your own business. Um, again, as I teased in our invitation, you can skip the loan altogether. If you leverage build to suit partnerships, which we are establishing today because we have the size and scale to do it, you can avoid the down payment. I talked about that earlier because if you don't have a loan, you don't need a down payment. You can avoid the loan. A simple way to think about it is if you are building a half million dollar restaurant, the loan for the project will probably have a payment. Uh, I think our loans on those projects have been uh, somewhere between five to six thousand dollars a month, something to that effect, Correct. Yep. right? And that's covering our tenant improvements and our equipment package. Literally half of that loan is covering the tenant improvements, so three thousand dollars a month. 
in a build the suit relationship, the build the suit partner will build those TIs out and configure your restaurant for you. And now you skip the $3,000 a month loan payment. That works as long as you're getting the building at market rent. So if you're not paying a premium for the rent, that in exchange for helping that developer or the landlord with an existing building repurpose their building, they deliver you those tenant improvements, you, you can now afford a more premium prime retail location, but you're paying market rents and you essentially are getting your tenant improvements for free, which conserves your cash. You will use a capital lease to cover the equipment, as the bankers like to say, everything that can be rolled out of the building, but again, build the, sorry, capital lease packages typically do not require equity down payments, just first and last payments. Again, check us out on the Wiley Development Group Facebook and or Wiley Development Group YouTube channel. You can watch recordings of these events.